Fan reaction time then, Sunderland 1, Burnley 0. Um, it's difficult to know where to start on these sort of fan reactions when there's so much to talk about because obviously there's a lot of stuff surrounding all the player cells at the minute and we'll get into that. Um, what I'll do is I'll talk about the game first and then I'll try and get into the player sales um, without talking too much about unnecessary speculation again that I've just seen tonight. Um, we we were not the better team. Sunderland were the better team. Sunderland deserved to win. Uh, if anything, it, it should have been two, maybe three nil to Sunderland. Um, they were better in every area of the pitch than what we were. Um, they wanted it more. Um, they pressed us well. We couldn't press them that well. Uh, they got into shape quickly. Um, we were pretty slow at doing that. They wanted to drive forward. For some reason, we didn't. Look, there was obviously quite a few big players missing. Dara, which we're going to have to get used to because Scott Parker's confirmed that he's off, so he'll never pull on a Burnley shirt again. Uh, good riddance. If, if you don't want to be here, good riddance. Um, I wanted to keep him, obviously. Um, but he, he obviously doesn't want to be here. Um, so, not off you pop. Uh, to be fair, centre-back is probably one of the old... <laughs> One of the areas where we're pretty stacked, and obviously Warrell's come in already, so I'm not going to lose too much sleep over Dora, even though I'm annoyed that he's leaving, and I'm annoyed at the timing of it. Um, it's just... But anyway, yeah, back to the match. Um, yeah, we couldn't drive forward, and I feel like Corley Allshaw was a massive part of that. We had no player who wanted to get the ball at his feet and run at their full-backs, run at their defence. Nobody did that. And in the first half, we were that bad. I don't think there was a part, you know, a, a succession of play where we strung more than five or six passes together until like the last five minutes of that first half when we actually held the ball for quite a while and played around with it quite well, but got absolutely nowhere in terms of territory. We were just passing it around the back, doing a little couple of quick one twos in the middle, putting our foot on it. Then when Sunderland depresses, shit ourselves, turn around and pass it back. Got absolutely nowhere with it. Second half started exactly the same as the first half went. Sunderland the better side. Burnley not being able to do anything. Um, obviously, then they had a man sent off. And I thought maybe, just maybe, you know, we, we might actually start showing a bit of urgency. But we didn't. We just didn't show any urgency. And there was so many bad performances on that pitch today. And I'm not going to single any of the players out because I feel sorry for the players. I feel sorry for Scott Parker. We've just... The amount of sales and the amount of links away and all this disruption all happening in one week is only going to have a negative effect on the play inside of a football team. This isn't, you know, like an NFL draft or, or whatever. I don't know. I don't follow American sport. But I, I just feel like it's all a bit too much. It's all... Sell, 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 sell. We, we all expected outgoings. I expected to lose Sander. I expected to lose Wilson or the Bear. But then do it in July. Do it early. Why have they waited so long? And now we're selling players that we didn't necessarily really need to sell. Surely we could have kept all. If he wants to go, he wants to go. I get that. But look at Leeds last year. All right, they didn't go up. That's the argument with Leeds. They didn't go up. But they managed to keep hold of the better players. And all right, they've solved them this summer, but they had a go. They had a go. They kept hold of the better players. We, we, literally anybody who wants to leave is like, all right, then fair enough, go. Do you, not, do you not think we could maybe try and keep hold of one or two? I know some people say you don't want people who don't want to be here. And obviously I get that. I understand that. I, I don't want people who don't want to be here myself. But just, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm not going to lie. I'm emotional. Um, emotional is a strong word, um, to be fair, but you know, um, just just say to Dara, you're not going anywhere, especially not to Ipswich, because, all right, they've, they've bought well, to be fair, but the chances are they were coming straight back down. They may or may not. They've bought well, like I said, but the chances are they were coming straight back down. Why would you want to go there? Why? I just don't get it. I, I, I actually quite like Ipswich. I'm not slagging them off as a club. I just mean in the position that they're in now and the position that we could have been in if we didn't just sell everybody, then we could have been going up and they could have been going down. Now we've strengthened them and weakened ourselves. I don't know. I, ju I just feel like it's all too much. It's all too much. And then now I'm looking at... Like, I've, I've got a bit of stick today because I 
try to not lose my head in all of this. I try to put... Because I understand that when you've got a following of like 70,000, that's not me personally, obviously, I'm not trying to sound big-headed, but Turfcast, the page across all social medias, has a following of around 70,000. I, I appreciate it's across different social medias, so some of them will be the same people. Um, but the numbers combined are around 70,000. And I understand if I put like panicky stuff out all the time, where this guy's being sold, that guy's being sold, it can have a negative effect. I understand that there comes a level of responsibility. So I've tried to be calm about it all. And I got stick today because everyone's getting sold off. Remember when Turfcast were trying to tell everyone it will be all right? I'm just as worried as you. I'm just I'm more so worried than some of you because I'm, I'm, I'm the fan that goes to all the games. Some of these people that sit there and criticise aren't. I'm just as worried as the rest of you. But today, the news of Dara, even though it was expected, I just think it's because of the time it came at, the news of Corby Orshaw being linked heavily to Wolves, from a decent source in Wolves, by the way. Um, and now, literally, as I've come downstairs, there's links from Turkey that Trabs on Spore are going to get Josh Brownell. I know I've said a few times on the pod, my arm's getting tired. I've not said that on the pod before. Um, but I know I've said a few times on the, t on the pod, I don't really trust Turkey sources, so we'll see what happens there. Um, but we, we can't just we can't just now, after we've sold Orderbear, Berg, Dara, Arrow, now go and sell, all right, Josh, Brown, off your pop, you're the captain, but it doesn't matter. And Luca, your only decent winger we've got now, off you pop and all. I mean, look at look at what happened today. Luke McNally, I've got nothing against the kid. I'm sure he will have a very good career at centre-back as a defender. We put him up front. Luke McNally, we put up front. It's beggar's belief. Like, we were doing this six years ago under Dyche and Garlic, and we were criticising that board for not bringing enough players in. And that's why we're having to stick Kevin Long up front. And now we're sticking Luke McNally up front. I'd probably rather have Kevin Long up front than Luke McNally. We've regressed. We're doing the same things we did six years ago, but at least that was in the Premier League. Luke McNally up front. What on earth? We've just sold... What's he called? Michael Oberfemi. All right, he's not a world beater. All right, we've loaned him out before someone says... Hmm. But we've loaned him out. He could have come off the bench today. And gone up front for the last 10. He probably wouldn't have done anything. But Luke McNally, that's the position that we are in. We're putting Luke McNally up front. And another thing, love Jay Rodriguez. Absolutely adore the man. But it's 2024 and he's still starting football matches for Burnley Football Club. Look, I got a lot of stick on Twitter today because I tried not to be a dickhead for the last two weeks. Um, but today's been tough. Seeing us sell more and more and more and then put in that performance and then come home. It's not an easy drive, that, by the way. That bit from Ripon all the way to Burnley on them A-roads, I ate it. Ate it. And then I get out at car, my legs are stiff. I get a phone call off work. Where are you? What do you mean? You're supposed to start work half an hour ago. Fuck's sake. I thought I'm in tomorrow. And then I get upstairs, open my laptop. Luca Corleosio to Wolves. Josh Brownell to Turkey. Stop selling people. Please. It's, it's getting difficult to defend the process. It's getting difficult to defend the board at this moment. Look, I've had my emotional rant before people go, oh, look at Stay. He's, he's a bedwetter and all this. Let's judge it at the end of the window. I know I'm just contradicting everything I've said for the last five minutes. I'm upset. You're upset. We're all upset. Everybody's had a, everybody's had a dream. I haven't because I was driving. Um, but we need to judge it at the end of the window. We really, really do. It's a massive week for Alan and his board and, you know, Matt. And it's a massive week for the football club. We've got Blackburn, then Leeds after the international break but we need now we had depth now we've got imbalanced depth we've got 10 centre backs but then not enough options up front not enough options on the wing we've gone from having too many wingers my hands so tired to having not enough wingers 
Allen. Big week, mate. Big week. It's getting it's getting hard. We can't we cannot go into a championship season with the squad as it is now. Two goalkeepers on the bench, you know, some under twenty ones, two or three hundred under twenty ones on the bench. Scott Parker, by the way, I've been rambling for ten minutes, I'm gonna wrap it up in a minute. Scott Parker, by the way, looked fuming at full time in that interview on the Burnley Express website. Obviously on the Burnley website it's all PR stuff, so don't watch that one. But on the Burnley Express I said not website, Twitter account, watch it. It looks fuming. And I think Esteve does mention something to be fair. I haven't got round to watching that interview yet, but I think Esteve does mention something to be fair. I saw on Twitter about a lot of, you know, links and a lot of players being sold. He didn't say this directly, but it affects the players on the pitch. Massive week at the football club. And I'm not even talking about the fixture that we've got on Saturday. That's obviously massive. Massive week at the football club. We need to bring some quality players in. We need to balance the depth out. Ten centre, well, nine centre-backs now with Dara leaving. But not enough options up front. Not enough options on the wings. It's, uh, yeah, today's been tough, not going to lie. But up the clarets, I guess.